Hello, good day, everybody. Welcome back to today's class. I hope you're all doing well. Today, we are going to look at time and time management. So what is time and time management? Time as a subject of study has attracted a lot of scholarly attention over the years, right from the period of the ancient times to date. So you find great philosophers like Aristotle and Plato, you find scientists like Isaac Newton and Albert Einstein, and many other scholars um, propounding theories and discussing the concept of time from their own uh, scholarly backgrounds and perspective. Time, it is said, cuts across disciplines, and it is also considered as a cultural issue. For that matter, it is very important to place time very well when it comes to the discussion of culture and development. The misuse of time, most of the times, like um, lateness to work, is, is um, seen as one of the hindrances to development. When it comes to Africa, negative attitudes to time like lateness to work and functions or procrastination have been associated with the African people. And this association is not just by foreign or the Western world, but the African people themselves. And so when you talk about um, negative attitudes to time like lateness to work and procrastination, it becomes synonymous to Africa, all the African people. And this has given birth to the notion known as African time. So most of the time is when you are in your house or you are on the street, you hear people say, this is African time. That is the Ghanaian time. And this notion of African time seems to have come to stay. The Africans have accepted this as part of them and they seem to believe in it. This idea or notion of African time seems to um, stem from the belief that when it comes to time, the European understanding of time is different from that of the African people. These differences appear in some negative way, especially when it has to do with the African people. When with this notion of time, it seems to suggest that essentially when it comes to the African people, time is, um, African time is premised on the argument that punctuality is of no consequence. So for this reason, people do things whenever they feel like they should do it without paying due attention to the time, to when and how long it takes. This idea of African time also seems to carry the perception that when it comes to Africans, time is seen as a resource which is in abundance. And time does not have any economic, economic value. So you hear people say there's no need to rush, there's plenty of time. I mean, why should I do this at this particular time? Time is on my side, I'll do it whenever I feel like it. And this seems to contradict the popular adage that time is money. Time is money. So when it comes to the African people, it seems that the popular adage, time is money, does not apply to them. Some scholars have argued that Africa as a continent and the African people continue to be underdeveloped because of their negative attitude to time. The problem is so much endemic that the notion of punctuality seems not to exist among the African people. Lateness to functions, lateness to work has become accepted and is used as an excuse when people come late to work or attend functions. Most often than not, when you go for a program and then people come late, and then you want to reprimand them for coming late. They are like, oh, it's an African time. Or when you are home with someone and they need to attend a program at 7, and probably it's 7.30 and they are still at home, and then you ask, isn't the program supposed to start at 7, and you are here at 7.30, and then the answer they give you is, oh, don't, don't worry. It's African time, so the program will definitely not start at seven. And this notion of African time cuts across 
all classes of society. Middle class people suffer from it. The, the, um, the high class society as, as well as the low class society. So it cuts across all people of social classes and status. And it is even more profound among people with um, a higher social status, among the elitist. More often than not, when you have to attend a program or a function, it seems that coming to the program late has become associated with the big men who are supposed to grace the occasion. So when one begins to move higher on the social ladder, punctuality becomes less important to them, and then the idea of the African time becomes what is more prevalent among people at that level. So let's look at time in Africa or time within the African cultures. So the question is, before the coming of the Europeans to Africa, did the African people have a concept of time? Did they know what time is? How did they calculate their time? So the answer is yes. The African people had a notion of time. They had their own kind of calendar. Their own, they had their own kind of calendar, which had their own years and their own months which was suitable to the way they calculated it. Now, this um, notion of time in ancient African societies was different from the European, the European concept of time, which has become the dominant um, concept of time that we have in today's society. It is important to note that traditionally, the various African societies had their own concept of time and how they calculated time. So in this lecture, we are going to take an example from the Akan people to use it to illustrate how the African people understood time or how they calculated time before the coming of the Europeans to Africa. So let's use the example of the festival called Udra. The African people calculated time by their festivals and by the time and by the, the day and months. Okay, so by using Odura as a festival, it is important to note that the Odura celebration lasted for a period of 14 days. And it was celebrated at the end of every year. So whenever it was time for the celebration of the Odura festival, it told the people in the community that that particular year had come towards an end. It's like, for instance, what we have today, like Christmas. If you don't have any idea about time, but you get to know that it is, Christ it is Christmas, you are aware that Christmas is always celebrated at the end of every year. So once it is Christmas, you automatically become aware of the fact that the year has come to an end. So similarly, the Odra festival, which was celebrated at the end of every year, marked the end to every year. So it was a time that people traveled from far and near to meet in their hometowns, to meet in their hometowns, to come together as a family, to settle family differences, to celebrate, to meet new people, make new acquaintances, to get married, and undertake a lot of activities together. So for these people, the, the celebration of the Odura was an indication that the year had come to an end. Most of the, in traditional Akan societies, the month was 40 to 42 days. So in every month, they had 40 to 42 days. And the months were nine months, not 12 months, but nine months. Okay. The Odra festival was preceded by um, a practice known as Adaibutu. The Adaibutu was a meditation period. And this meditation period was observed 40 days to the end of the traditional year. So this celebration illustrates that indeed there was a concept of time 
among the Akan people, even before the arrival of the Europeans. Okay, so this seems to suggest that when we talk about time in traditional African societies, it was different from the Western concept of time that was introduced to them, which has become the dominant concept of time. One of the differences was that in African societies, time was not numericalized into segments like what we have now, and there was no consistency with it. So in today's concept of time, there is 12 months in a year. And in every month, you either have 31 days or 30 days or 28 days. And this has been the same over the years. So that is the consistency. So every year, you know you have 12 months in the year. But this was not the case in traditional African societies. Similarly, in, in the Western concept of time, um, it is calculated by chronometers. So they use watches and then they use uh, sandals and it is, cal it is calibrated according to time. So there is 1 to 12. So when the long hand is on 1 and the short hand of the watch is on 12, then this is the time. But in African societies, traditional African societies, Time was not calibrated in that manner. There was nothing like 1 o'clock or 1 p.m. or 12 noon or 1, uh, 1 p.m. Rather, it was calculated according to the time period. So there was morning, there was afternoon, and there was evening, and there was night. Sometimes, most of the times, when the sun rises, it was calculated by using the rising of the sun. Or when the cock crows, so in traditional African societies, when the court crew, it signified that the day had broken. It wasn't part, uh, specifically about whether it was 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. or 8 a.m., but it was morning, and that was it. There was no um, calculation of time in absolute terms. Again, the time was also calculated by the length or the position of your shadow. In traditional African societies, when you, when you stand in the sun and then you look at the direction of your shadow, you are able to tell whether it is noon or it is getting dark or is in the evening. Or when you look at the length, is your shadow long, is it short, is it medium? Then you use that to tell the time of day. Mind you, telling the time of day was not so much about saying it in absolute terms as in 1 p.m. or 2 p.m., but stating that it is either morning, afternoon, evening, night, or midnight. And the fact that the, the African people, specifically the Akan people, had names to describe these periods of time signifies that indeed there was a concept of time among the African people. So morning, the Akan would say Anopa. In the afternoon, they will say area. In the evening, it is a numere. At night, you have a anaju. Midnight, we say ahemachi. When it is deep into the night, we say anaju kong kong. So, the next question we are going to answer is, with this notion of African time, where lateness to function has become the order of the day, is there any consequences of it? Does the idea of African time has any consequences in the daily activities of people, especially in our, our business transactions? Indeed, it is not hard to see or to note that treating time as a valuable worth treasure can have very serious implications in modern African societies. When you, look, when you treat time as something with no value, it can have dark consequences on your daily activities. For instance, when you look at the, the concept or the practice of going to work or function late, you realize that it delays the commencement of programs. It delays the commencement of programs. And the fact that it delays the commencement of program also affects programs that are supposed to follow up. So let's say you have a program lineup and then you start the program list. You realize that you either rush through the program or you take some of the program out of it 
out of what you have earlier planned to do. Secondly, you end up rushing the program than you have intended it to do. So a program is supposed to last for about two hours and then you start about 30 minutes late. So you begin to rush through the program and you don't have much time to execute the program the way you have originally intended it to okay. Again, it also results in um, some of the planned activities not being carried out entirely. So you look through your program outline and you're like, okay, this, this aspect is not important. Let's get it out. We don't have much time on our hands. If time is money, then it can be imagined that how much that we can imagine how much the economy is losing financially and in terms of productivity. Going to work late affects the level of productivity and also affects um, the economic and financial growth of every company. If meetings are also supposed to commence without a quorum, most of the times during formal meetings, meetings only commence when the number of people who are present forms a quorum. This means that when people come late and the people present do not form a quorum, the meeting cannot hold. In situations where the meeting proceeds even without a quorum, the decisions that are taken can also be challenged in court as null and void, which also retards the progress of any serious company. At the same time, when a meeting is scheduled in the business world, and because, because of late night, a, forum, a quorum was not formed, and then the meeting has to be postponed. It also affects the planning of the company. It affects the, the deadlines that they are supposed to meet. It affects their work schedule, and then it affects their productivity in general. Lastly, when meetings are also postponed as a result of lack of quorum, it inflicts disappointment and mental aggravation on the people who spent their time and money and came in early to attend to that program. So some, some scholars have asked this question. Can we have a solution to the idea of African time? Is it possible to have a solution where the African people will actually keep to time and not come to work or attend functions late? Is there a possibility that the African notion or that idea of African time can be changed. Okay, so Nina Gadegbeku, who is a Ghanaian, has provided an answer to this question. According to Nina, yes, this problem can be solved, and this problem can only be solved when time is monetized or when, when time becomes an issue of monetization. According to him, about 90% of the problem that African people face with regards to time can be solved when the African people are paid wages instead of salary. What this means is that people should be paid according to the number of hours they work and not because they come to work and at the end of the month they are paid irrespective of, irrespective of how much time they put into their work. He gives an example that when it comes to trotto drivers and taxi drivers, the amount of money they make is as a result of how much time they work. And so for that reason, they do not joke with their time. So you see some of them rushing and overspeeding on the road simply because they want to get to their destination early, return early, to be able to do more trips, which will result in them getting more money for themselves. So for that reason, if the African companies want to solve the problem of African time, then they should be paying wages instead of salary. He goes further to say that many Africans have migrated to live in Western worlds. And in these Western worlds, you are paid according to the number of hours you work. When these Africans who live in their country go to work late, when they migrate to these um, European countries and these Western ones, these same people go to work very early. They are never late to work. 
Some of them are working two or three jobs, yet they are always on time. And his explanation is that the African people stick to time because when they, when they migrate to these European and Western world, because they know that the amount of money they are going to make is dependent on, is dependent on how much time they work. And so for that reason, they take time seriously and respect the value of time. So if the African people, when moved out of the African continent, are conscious of time and, and, and obey and give value to time, then it means that the idea of African time is not something that has to do with the African concept of time, but is rather an attitude of the African people which can be changed. So, in conclusion, we can say that when it comes to time, in traditional African societies, the traditional idea of time differs from the Western concept of time, which is regulated by chronometers and does not permit deviations. However, many Africans today use chronometers and they are not ignorant of time and its implications. Although the traditional concept of time was different from the Western concept of time in Africa, in today's Africa, the Western idea or concept of time is what is being used and what is being practiced today. And that the African people's failure to manage time properly can have negative repercussions, either it being social, political, and economic. And for that reason, the African people should have a real look at how they look at time and have an, a positive attitude towards the usage of time. Thank you very much for your time. We'll meet same time next week for the next lecture. See you again. Bye.